NASCAR elects to suspend Bubba Wallace for one race. Did they get it right? How's it going y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Just past 5 p.m. Eastern Time today, NASCAR released their penalty report from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And at the very top of said report, NASCAR confirmed they are suspending driver Bubba Wallace for one race. No additional fine or points penalty, but Bubba Wallace becomes the first NASCAR Cup Series driver since Matt Kenseth in 2015 to be suspended. Let's take one more look at the incident that led to this decision. Midway through Sunday's race at Las Vegas, Bubba Wallace was battling Kyle Larson for position inside the top five. Larson drives it in a bit too hard, slides up the track, forces Bubba Wallace into the outside wall. Then Bubba hit the gas, turned left right into Larson's right rear quarter panel, sent both cars careening into the outside wall and into playoff driver Christopher Bell. Both drivers then exited their vehicles. Bubba walked all the way over to Kyle Larson in his car and confronted Larson, shoving him several times. Eventually, Bubba Wallace turned and walked away, sort of shrugging off NASCAR officials who were attempting to direct him to the ambulance. He later said in his Infield Care Center interview that the steering broke after the initial impact. That's what caused him to crash into Larson. That is what happened on Sunday and led to nearly the entire industry calling for some sort of action. Many were calling for a suspension, many others were calling for just a points penalty or a fine. Well, NASCAR has made their decision. Yes, a one race suspension for Bubba Wallace means he will miss this Sunday's race at Homestead Miami Speedway. As of the evening I'm recording this, 2311 Racing has not yet announced a replacement driver. Many would assume it'd be John Hunter Nemechek. He was fitted for a seat earlier in the year to be the relief driver for 2311. It was weird when they ended up going with Ty Gibbs earlier this summer. Also, John Hunter's got some Cup Series experience, so he makes the most sense. We also don't know if 2311 Racing will appeal this penalty. Theoretically, I guess they could. I'm not sure that they will though, because honestly, this doesn't hurt 2311 Racing nearly as bad as it hurts Bubba Wallace. Aside from the PR damage, I suppose, I'm sure sponsors aren't too happy with Bubba's actions, but that's already happened. You can't go back in time and change that. As far as like the points penalty, doesn't really affect 2311. Bubba Wallace takes a hit in the driver points, but owner points are what pay the best at the end of the day. And if someone drives that 45 this weekend, they'll still collect owner points. So they might submit an appeal, but they also might not. I genuinely don't know. For now, at least, Bubba Wallace is suspended for one race. NASCAR VP Steve O'Donnell went on Sirius XM NASCAR radio earlier this evening and explained the reasoning behind NASCAR's decision. Our actions are really specific to what took place on the racetrack. When we look at, you know, how that incident occurred, you know, in our minds, you know, really a, a dangerous act we, we thought that was intentional and put other competitors at risk. You know, as we look at the sport and where we are today and, and where we want to draw that line going forward, we thought that definitely crossed the line, and, and that's what we focused on in terms of making this call. NASCAR is attempting here to draw a line in the sand. A line that drivers must beware. If they cross it, NASCAR will take action. Once again, here is the section of the rulebook NASCAR is referring to. I'm going to read this whole thing. Member actions that could result in a loss of 25 to 50 driver and team owner points and 50 to $100,000 fine. Violations may also result in race suspensions, indefinite suspensions, or termination. First, physical confrontation with the NASCAR official, media members, fans, etc. Second, member-to-member -member confrontations with physical violence and other violent manifestations such as significant threats and or abuse and or endangerment. Third, attempting to manipulate the outcome of the race or championship. Fourth, intentionally wrecking or spinning another vehicle whether or not that vehicle is removed from competition as a result. And fifth, any actions deemed to compromise the safety of an event or otherwise pose a dangerous risk to the safety of competitors, officials, spectators, or others. It's those last two bullet points that stand out to me, intentionally wrecking someone and actions that compromise a competitor's safety. I mentioned this is the first time since 2015 that a Cup Series driver was suspended, but in 2019, Johnny Sauter was suspended for wrecking Austin Hill under caution at Iowa Speedway during a NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race. Of course, the Matt Kenseth deal in 2015 where he just took out Joey Logano at Martinsville. And then Kyle Busch, 2011. That was a truck series race as well when he wrecked Ron Hornaday at Texas. He was suspended cup races for that. All those incidents led to suspensions. Now, there have been several borderline incidents just in the last year alone that may have some NASCAR fans questioning NASCAR's consistency. 
For one, just a few weeks ago, William Byron intentionally spun Denny Hamlin out at Texas under caution. He didn't plow him into the wall, didn't right hook him head first into the dog leg, but he did spin him out through the grass. No real damage was done to either car. NASCAR handed Byron a 25 point penalty and a $50,000 fine. In my opinion, the penalty was fair. They read their own rule book, interpreted it correctly, and gave out the proper fine. A separate appeals panel then rescinded the points penalty and just upped the fine a little bit. I thought that was the wrong call. In that same race, Ty Gibbs door slammed Ty Dillon going down pit road with crew members and officials nearby and was handed a $75,000 fine. At Road America in the Xfinity race earlier this year, Noah Gregson was hit with a 30 point penalty and $35,000 fine for intentionally spinning Sage Karam, which triggered a wreck that took out many other cars. All those incidents I just showed you resulted in, at the very least, a fine. There's one notable incident from the Truck Series earlier this year where Carson Hosevar right reared Colby Howard at IRP, sent Howard headfirst into the wall didn't face any sort of penalty for that. No points penalty, no fine. I don't know how NASCAR missed that one. That should have at the very least been a fine. Many have referred to that incident in the past couple of days and said, well, hey, if they didn't do anything to Carson Hosevar, there's no way they can suspend Bubba Wallace, right? And I actually kind of agree. NASCAR set a very unfortunate precedent by not disciplining Carson Hosevar for that. They should have. I'm not sure why they didn't. Sure, there's a difference between a short track without a dog leg like IRP versus Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Far more dangerous conditions over here. But that's not to say what happened at IRP wasn't dangerous, wasn't dumb, wasn't silly, wasn't foolish. Carson Osovar should have been disciplined for that. NASCAR dropped the ball, deserves to be called out for it, but I think they got the Bubba Wallace penalty correct. I believe a one race suspension is a fair penalty. NASCAR has to draw that line in the sand. Preferably not in the sand, preferably with like permanent marker, something that can't wash away, be blown away, something that's firm and established. A precedent NASCAR can actually stick to for once. Feels like we talk all the time about how major penalties are setting a new precedent, and then you know a year later, NASCAR doesn't adhere by that precedent. Sometimes it feels like precedent doesn't really matter when it comes to NASCAR you know, officiating things. See the Carson Hosevar example. NASCAR is at least somewhat to blame for letting things escalate to this point. They've been very hands off with a lot of penalties this year. They haven't, again, they have not suspended a cup driver in seven years. I'm not saying they should be dishing out suspensions left and right, but when you know the William Byron penalty gets rescinded, again, not by NASCAR, but by a separate panel, that undermines NASCAR officials' credibility. And I think it's just gonna lead to more drivers acting out, pushing the envelope, testing the limits. I know in the moment, Bubba Wallace isn't thinking about all that. He just lost his head for a moment. He was upset that he had a really good car capable of winning that just got damaged by Larson making a dumb move. And he just retaliated in the moment without even thinking about it. I know he's not thinking about precedent. He's not thinking about how NASCAR has acted on certain issues in the past, but it is important that NASCAR establishes this line and officiates by it going forward. Fans and people like to compare, well, you know, the what ifs or what happened in the past. And, and for us, this was a reaction based on, you know, what took place Sunday and what we don't want to see going forward in races. If anyone pulls a host of our in the near future, I would expect at least a hefty fine. There is a difference between hooking someone at a short track. Bubba Wallace got hooked by Michael McDowell a couple years ago at Bristol. There's a difference between getting hooked at a short track versus 170 miles per hour into the dog leg at Las Vegas. There's a huge, huge difference. There's a difference between Noah Gregson spinning someone out at a slower road course than getting hit into the dog leg at Las Vegas. There is a difference. I guess this is just me saying NASCAR does need to police over aggressive driving a little bit. They've been very hands off, especially compared to other major motorsports. They don't like to get involved. Boys have at it was the mantra they went by for a long, long time. I do think that should go away, at least to an extent. When it comes to using your car to wreck someone, especially at high speeds, NASCAR should get involved. And I hope today's ruling is the like official start of them consistently doing that. I hope I'm not just talking in circles right here. Bubba Wallace has said it himself. You can't right rear hook somebody at a racetrack and expect to get away with it. I think somebody pulled out a clip from him on the Dale Jr. download a few years ago. Right rearing somebody on an oval track, that's grounds for taking gloves off and in the middle of a fight and getting your ass whooped, right? I think this is the right call. Be interested to see how Bubba Wallace reacts to it. Be interested to see how 2311 responds to it. 
I think this is the right call. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. We talk NASCAR news every single day, react to races, discuss rumors, and much more. As always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters as well for continuing to support the show, support the channel. I greatly appreciate it. I will be back again probably tomorrow. It is a busy, busy week. Just a few races left before we crown our 2022 series champion. Champions, Trucks Xfinity Cup, ARCA as well. A lot of exciting stuff coming up. Can't wait to share that with y'all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.